Hi you guys, welcome back to my channel and to another episode of Science Sundays. This week we are splitting our episode into three different parts so that you can watch the segment that is best suited to you. This segment is going to discuss oily scalps and oily hair. The other two discuss the postpartum period of hair loss and also dandruff. So watch this one, watch them all, but let me know what you think of this fragmented way of sharing the episode. Before we go ahead and begin, I would love if you could like this video and subscribe to my channel. Again, this is solely because it helps me decide what you are engaging with, what you're responding well to, so that I can cater future content to the stuff that you like. But otherwise, let's jump right in. So a lot of people with oily scalps and oily hair will complain that they cannot go a single day without washing their hair and by the end of even that one day their scalp is starting to become oily again and that dry shampoo irritates their scalp or causes an itch. This oil doesn't mean that your hair is dirty, it doesn't mean that it's not supposed to be there. It is a completely natural part of our skin called sebum and it's meant to lubricate our skin and our hair follicles. So while it is supposed to be there for the purposes of hydrating our hair and keeping it soft, a buildup can cause a greasy feeling, even burning of the scalp, and at the worst, thinning of your hair. You can naturally have a scalp that overproduces sebum, but then this gets even more aggravated by things like improper washing routines, the wrong products, a buildup of styling products, etc. So to prevent this, we're going to start by talking about how you should be cleaning your hair. Because no matter what your hair is going through, you should not be washing it every day. Ideally, if your hair is oily, try to wash it every other day. But I suggest even trying to go two days between washes and double shampooing on the days when you do shampoo your hair. When you're shampooing, don't just shampoo your ends because that will just deplete them of hydration. Really concentrate shampoo in your scalp, in your roots, and exfoliate it. You should be standing in the shower, rubbing your scalp for a good two, three minutes to really get rid of any oil and product buildup and properly cleanse your hair of any of those things as well as a fungal overgrowth um, and anything else that can cause your hair to feel unhealthy and to cause it to be just mediocrely clean rather than as clean as it should be. The win-win situation in this case is that the longer you spend washing your hair and exfoliating your scalp, the more blood circulation you're producing to the area, thereby helping the overall health and growth of your hair. By doing this and also going as long as you can without washing your hair, you are maintaining balance in this Goldilocks principle, which is ideal for the health of your hair and skin. We want to make sure that our scalp is clean so that the cells can breathe, our hair can grow, and our hair can look nice externally also, besides being healthy on the inside, but also we don't want it to be so stripped of nutrients that it has to overproduce oil because we've dried out our scalp so much. This routine of double cleansing and going longer between washes actually helps your hair to balance out how often it produces oil in order to hydrate your hair because it really only does this most of the time if your health is intact in order to hydrate your hair. And when there is excess need for hydration because of the drying effects of our habits, then our scalp has to overproduce oil just like our skin overproduces oil when we strip that too much. Another thing to be conscientious about is the products that you're choosing. Products labeled as being deep conditioning or producing a fine silky hair usually are just coating your hair in this residue which in turn makes your hair feel limp and look greasy. So if your hair is prone to being oily as it is, don't go for these deeply conditioning treatments and instead opt for things like a clarifying shampoo. You can use this once a week or once every few weeks just to massively get rid of that buildup or you can make your own at home. To make your own, dilute one cup of apple cider vinegar with two or three cups of water and pour it all over your scalp in the shower. Leave it in your scalp for 10 to 20 minutes and then shampoo it out with shampoo just one time and feel the health and the life and the volume in your hair afterwards. This will not leave your hair smelling of apple cider vinegar and if you'd like and if your hair tends to be dry you can go in with a deep hydrating product but only on the ends my rule of thumb is to never apply a conditioner above the level of your ears or your jaw so only this part of your hair should be treated with those deeply conditioning treatments 
Also remember that our internal health is always going to shine through on our external surfaces. Scientists have looked at blood samples after eating various meals and seen that the plasma portion of our blood, which is the liquid portion that remains once red blood cells are separated away from it, is so much more cloudy after a fatty meal, such as one comprising of beef or other fatty meat sources, or even after deep fried foods. So since the grease has to go somewhere, imagine how many places these molecules can accumulate in our bodies and seep through our pores, especially when this effect is compounded over years of eating in the same way. You can also use a hair mask of tea tree oil and a light oil like sweet almond to start that rehydration process of your hair on your own so your scalp doesn't feel the need to produce that oil internally. Consume your five to seven servings of fruits and vegetables every single day without fail, especially if you're suffering with hair health issues. What I like to do is consume a green juice first thing in the morning on an empty stomach because I find it primes me for the rest of the day and I feel that the nutrients are better absorbed into my bloodstream when they're not compounded with other things that my body is trying to digest and break down. My favorite and one that I have been taking for years and having all my friends and family take for years is the Subi Super Juice. This stuff tastes like grass, but if you put it in just half a glass of water, chug it down really fast and throw a lemon wedge in your mouth afterwards, it's very easy to stomach. You actually get it used to the taste and you kind of miss that when you're not having it on a daily basis. But most importantly, you're priming yourself by having at least four servings of fruits and vegetables before your day has even begun. So it kind of makes your life a little easier as far as what to fit into the rest of your meals in the day. This juice in particular is my favorite because I have found it is the best composition of fruits and vegetables that are going to detoxify your blood, your liver, help replenish your gut microbiome even, and contains something called maca, which is going to balance your hormones. Imbalanced hormones can also contribute to altered oil production in your body, whether that's in your scalp or on your face. And so getting something to regulate that is really going to help you in the long run. So that's all for now. Those are my recommendations for if you have an oily scalp, please let me know what you thought of this video and go ahead and watch the other two segments of this episode of Science Sundays if you'd like. One is talking about postpartum hair loss and another is talking about dandruff. Let me know again what you think of segmenting the videos in this way. Is it easier to digest? And let me know what you would like to see next. But that's all from me for this video. I will talk to you soon. Bye.